We start with a narrated expo dump telling us that there's a bunch of people in the world who can remember their past lives. Like that reincarnation thing what my hippie mum keeps banging on about, where she was once a middle-aged milkmaid from the Middle Ages. Or some shit. Anyway, it says within this group of immortal souls that two groups emerged. First, the believers, who are the goodies and want to make the world a better place. And then we have the nihilists, who are the baddies and want to destroy the world because they can't be asked to keep coming back to this place and being a spotty teenager over and over again. <sighs> we then cut to Mexico City, where a subtitle informs us that this is the last life, where a handsome young chap called Treadway cauterizes a stomach wound in the middle of a car chase and contravenes the highway code by not keeping both hands on the wheel at all times. Gotcha. Someone call the DVLA, damn it. His two goody teammates try to keep up with him behind as it's revealed that Treadway is some sort of prize MacGuffin item what both sides really want. As he's pursued by goodies, baddies and cops alike, Treadway tells his buddies that if he doesn't make it then they need to quote, look inside. Though the fucker never says inside what. Lol. Then he sticks his hand out of the window as the air ripples around him, like a budget Jedi ripping off that false thing from Star Wars before driving off the edge of an unfinished bridge because reasons. Luckily, he totally uses his random force powers to boost himself over to a conveniently placed crane, before a truck rudely smashes into his colleagues behind. Man, the DVLA are going to have a field day with all these reckless drivers. Anyway, the baddie approaches as the pair say their goodbyes, and she says she'll find him in the next life before getting exploded real good and proper. Then we cut to current day Mark Wahlberg playing a character called Evan McCauley, who weirdly still looks and acts exactly like Mark Wahlberg, which is lucky for him because it means he doesn't have to put any effort into the role at all. Results. Anyway, he's struggling with half-baked memories and glimpses of a past what makes him confused and discombobulated and unsure of where he is most of the time. And before you can say, are we sure this ain't a Joe Biden documentary, we cut to present day NYC where he proceeds to get rejected from a waiter job when his prospective employer said he totally called up his ex-employers who all told him he was a right nutter with a history of violence. And Evan tries to expose that as a baseless lie by immediately getting all violent and threatening his boss what ignorantly won't trust that he's on the up and up. Bruh. Turns out this Mark Wahlberg fella's a literal schizo and has taken meds all his life to keep his condition in check. Because if he don't, he starts getting flashbacks to past lives like when he was a credible actor and also a porn star called Dirk Diggler for some reason. But he's so desperate for money that he handcrafts an incredibly intricate Japanese sword. As you do. And trades it for a bag of pills from a local drug dealer. Which I can tell you from personal experience almost always never works. Because last time I tried to swap a sword for drugs my dealer said pull your fucking trousers up game boy and just give me the cash for fuck's sake. Anyway... They tease him about his encyclopedic knowledge and how he knows more words than Susie Dent in Dictionary Corner. Ooh, I still would. Though he has no idea himself how he knows shit like the square root of pi and what gunpowder's made of, nor how he can do a master level crossword in under five minutes flat. Anyway, things go tits up when the drug lord tries to cut off his floozy's arm because reasons. So Marky Mark uses his innate fighting skills that seem to come out of nowhere to beat up the thugs and escape with the pills before deflecting actual bullets with his homemade sword and then falling off a four foot wall when his schizo fakey past life memories totally trick him into thinking he's on a glyph. The cops totally arrest his unconscious ass after doing a humpty dumpty off a small wall and it's here that we meet the dastardly Bathurst. He seems to know Evan, probably because he was a big fan of New Kids on the Block back in the day. Anyway, this baldy bugger recites Evan's backstory, where he was diagnosed as a schizo loony at age 14, and then tried to self-abort at 16 via crashing his motor, probably by remembering that past life where he took both hands off the wheel at the same time. Anyway, this resulted in him getting a steel plate inserted into the back of his skull, a piece of critical character info which I'm totally sure won't ever come up again or be super relevant by the time we get to Act 3. Bathurst then tries to jog his memory by showing him a bunch of items like car keys and guns and asking which of them used to be his. Unfortunately, none of them are cock rings or even that small plastic tree what M. Night Shyamalan gave him on the last day of shooting for the happening and so he's as bemused as before. Until he's given some sort of slingshot thing which triggers a flashback memory to when he was a savage hobo in a jungle. Or some shit. Suddenly though, a car smashes through the walls like a vehicular Kool-Aid man, as some tart saves his ass from getting deaded while making him look a right cack. 
Then this bathrobe bloke comes through in a giant fuck off truck and chases them through buildings and streets. Until they eventually escape, and this girl with the worst American accent in cinematic history tells him he's totally an MVP in the Infinite War for the Fate of All creation, before driving him to an airport hangar and asking him lots of rhetorical questions. Like, do you ever know things but don't know how you know them? Or do you ever tend to play the same character in every film but don't really know why? Bruh. She says her name is Nora, and explains that reincarnation is totally real, bro. And he made that handcrafted sword because he was totally a Japanese blacksmith a few hundred years ago. Which sounds so much better than this life, where he's a washed up actor and has to star in increasingly soul destroying Transformers sequels just to pay the bills. Meanwhile, head nihilist Bathurst deduces that the Believers have a base in New York and totally reckons that Evan can lead them all to an egg, which is totally that MacGuffin-y thing what Evan's past self had and was being chased for in the opening sequence. And I can totally relate. Last time I was chased for an egg it's because I picked up the last orange Smarties box at Easter and was chased all the way to the Lidl's checkout till by a small mum and a crying toddler. But I won that race fair and square. It's not my fault I had longer legs and could totally grab more items from the top shelf than a mostly peaceful looter in San Francisco. It's natural selection, bro. So take it up with that Darwin fella, love. Elsewhere, Nora does yet more expo dumping and explains that there's less than 500 people worldwide that can remember their past lives. Like when they were a bathroom attendant in Philly. Or a black fetus getting vacuum sucked into oblivion at a Planned Parenthood centre. Anyway, these lot are born with the ability to remember and it usually all happens by puberty. Like being able to read, and realising that not everyone's uncle crawls into their bed at 3am to quote, check everything's in order. <laughs> anyway! They eventually arrive at a secret place called The Hub, where the goodies are trying to jog Evan's memory about where that super important egg that everyone seems to want was hidden, after he died last time without telling anyone anything useful about his location. Here we meet a blue-haired Asian who teaches fisticuffs, and tells us that Bathurst is a master of combat, so he needs to be prepared. Then we're taken into an interactive virtual room, what's totally not a rip-off of the X-Men's danger room, when suddenly a shriveled up Raspberry Ripple appears who says her name's Garrick and is the head of R&D and shit. Apparently, Evan and Bathurst used to be best buds, until that baldy bloke got well bored of reincarnating and ungratefully just wanted it all to stop. So he had some techie types make that egg thing, and turns out it's designed to kill all living things on Earth. Because if nothing is left alive, then there'll be nothing to reincarnate into. And the virtual room shows us how it'll all happen, by ripping off more Marvel shit and using the blip dust effect to illustrate everyone dying and shit. I swear this Feige fella's gonna have a lawsuit on his hands. Bruh. Anyway, they tell him he raided Bathtub's lab in the last life, back when he was a more handsome chap and a far better actor to boot, and totally killed all the lab techs who knew how to build it and then stole the Egg McMuffin. I mean Egg McGuffin. Later, Garrick sadistically shows him his own corpse, because they've totally frozen his old body in water because reasons. Apparently, Treadway was super special and had evolved past human boundaries to where he could totally do crazy things, like bend air a bit and not have to pop his ears when a plane takes off, or something like that. In order to regain those abilities though, he needs to reopen those neural pathways, despite having a completely new brain and a totally different physical body. So he trains with the blue-haired Asian bird to teach him fisticuffs, before cosplaying as a budget bane to fire up the synapses. Which totally works, and he begins remembering more about that fateful night when he drove off a half-completed bridge and air-boosted himself up onto a crane. He sees himself fighting with that bath twerp's previous form, who was a white guy and looked kinda like a hitman with hair, but still can't quite get to the root of the memory. Later, some beardy bloke tells him you can't kill an infinite because they keep respawning and shit. So the next best thing is to shoot them with a bullet containing a digital chip which sucks up their soul as they die, leaving them in a digital limbo type purgatory place. Apparently, Bathurst has used this hellish technique on over 200 of their fellow reincarnating mates. And before you can say, hang on, why don't he just use it on himself then if he's so desperate to stop resurrecting and shit? Nora reveals her boyfriend was sucked into one of those digital prison chips so she's extra salty about it all and totally determined to free all the souls Bathurst has imprisoned in a fake heaven. Which also kind of sounds like a rip off of that lesbian episode of Black Mirror to be fair. Also later, 
Garrick and co have now made him cosplay as both Bane and that pinhead fella from Hellraiser, and are now zapping him with electric brain shots, sending him back to that night on the crane again. But alas, they shut it down when he starts to have a panic attack like a riot melt, with more anxiety than a TikToker having to talk to people IRL. Garrick reckons that the car accident and steel plate in his head isn't letting the memories flow, so as a last result, they take him to London to meet the artisan to reset his memory who's played by that bloke who also plays the same type of character in almost everything he ever appears in, so Marky Mark should feel right at home with this chap. But whilst they're gone, Bathtub finds the hub and confronts Garrick. Apparently, they used to be lovers in a previous life, before he has a total meltdown about how unfair it is that most infinites get memories back over years and can adjust accordingly, but he totally gets them all back straight away and has to spend nine months in the womb twiddling his half-formed thumbs and do fuck all for most of a year. Though I don't know why he's moaning, as that sounds like life goals for most youngins nowadays, and also a standard day in the life of a Twitter mod. Well, at least before Elon threw the kitchen sink at the lazy twats. Anyway, it's made him so crazy that he has to end it all, and he means that literally. I.e. in such a permanent way that there's no save point for respawning. Like an ultra version of the hardcore mode of dead space and shit. It also proves how utterly batshit Bathurst has become because he reckons by threatening all life in the universe it will somehow force the OG God to come down and have a face to face with him. I mean, I know these religious peeps can be a bit nutty but this is just taking the piss son. Meanwhile, over in London, the artisan reveals his super machine which amplifies the experience of when one's life flashes before their eyes and offers a complete mental reboot. And before you can say, someone better order one of these off Prime for Joey B, Evan jumps into the pod to try and remember once and for all where the hidden location of that egg thing is at. So the machine drowns him to bring him to the brink of death, and he eventually remembers that he stuffed that egg thing deep inside his own guts. And in a shocking twist what no one could ever see coming, turns out that that's what look inside meant all along. Unfortunately, He pretty much drowns after they stick him in an enclosed airtight tank full of water without even giving him a little straw to breathe through. Luckily, he soon comes back to life and tells them all the location of the egg. Huzzah! But before you can say, hang on, isn't the whole point of this group about hiding the egg's location from their crazy enemy so he can't go get it and then destroy all life on Earth and so isn't it better to just leave it buried inside the amnesiac's head forever? Evan screams out where it's hidden at the top of his lungs before Bathurst and his goons burst in and shoot up the gaff because he was totally surveilling them on his Apple iPad somehow. The blue-haired Asian gets shot and so does Evan, so that bearded bloke sacrifices himself to buy them time, whilst the rest of the gang make their escape. Unfortunately, Bathrobe kills the bearded bloke and digi-chips him into oblivion, whilst his goons retrieve Treadway's floating body from the hub. They eventually load up the corpse onto a plane so Bathspurt can cut the small sphere out of him, rather like my surgeon did for me in my gallstones last year. The artisan patches Evan up as Nora shoots up Bathurst's fancy English estate. He then goes all Tony Stark and uses digital projection light thingies to control iron drones. And by now, Kevin Feige must be calling up his fucking lawyers, Sam. Nora then spends a day at Go Ape and does a bit of ziplining through the woods, before taking out some stuntmen and destroying the drones. Evan picks her up but then gets his car blown up but they fight through some more goons as she heads to the manor to go destroy all those digital chips with lots of special soul data on them. As Evan heads off to stop Bathurst and totally nick his egg, because he's just jumped on his plane to get the fuck out of Dodge and set off the nuke thing that he's waited lifetimes to possess. Even though they specifically stated earlier that it really doesn't matter where it goes off as it will quickly grow to kill everything on Earth in days. So why he feels he has to fly it somewhere just to blow it up and thereby give the film's protagonist time to stop him, I don't know. Marky Mark then cosplays as a budget Tom Cruise and speeds his motorbike off a cliff before landing it perfectly on top of a flying plane. In the craziest aerial stunt since my mate Red jumped off the roof of Taco Bell whilst high on shrooms. But luckily, the beefy five layers he'd just consumed went straight through him and so he was able to use the thrust of his explosive diarrhoea to slow his descent before he crashed onto the bonnet of some rando's car. Naturally, Evan manages to stay attached to the plane flying at 500 miles an hour via clutching on to his little sword for dear life before he randomly channels his past self's airbending skills and totally stands up on top of a speeding plane. He eventually cuts his way inside and tries to dismantle the life bomb egg thing, but because he's Mark Wahlberg, he stupidly stands with his back to the main door and naturally gets a slug in the back of his head. But hilariously, 
add in a twist what feels like a straight up SNL parody at this point, he totally gets back up and reveals that the Baldy Bathurst idiot only went and shot him in the steel plate in the back of his head that he got when he had that car crash as a kid after he tried to off himself but couldn't even do that properly. So they then have a lame fight with god awful CGI until Bathrobe cuts the ropes and the bomb falls out of the plane. With only seconds to go before it explodes and all life is extinguished on planet Earth, Evan leaps out in a desperate last ditch attempt to reignite his career as a Tom Cruise action hero. I mean defuse the bomb. Unfortunately, Bath Derp also jumps out and they both somehow easily catch up to the bomb, even though they all jumped out at different times, heights and angles. Evan eventually kills his ancient frenemy in midair and manages to defuse the bomb before smashing into the sea harder than my plop smash into the bog bowl after consuming anything with a higher spice level than lemon and herb, and he totally dies on impact. Meanwhile, a mortally wounded Nora then blows herself up, along with all the digital data chips the villain had collected, and thereby freeing her boyfriend and all the other 200 souls from a life of digital misery. Unfortunately, they all ended up piss poor and so had to take up mod jobs over on Reddit and so were immediately put back into a form of digital misery anyway. Bruh. And so we end with Evan being reincarnated as a random Asian kid in Jakarta, who I kind of wish we were following all along, to be honest, rather than that washed up ex-pop star what plays the same character in every movie he somehow keeps getting hired to be in. And that's it. That's the plot and that's a lot. But man, hardly any of this shite even made any sense. Like, if the fate of the world relies on the villain never finding out where the hidden MacGuffin is, and the one man who does know where it is can't remember its location for Toffee, then why don't they just leave him be? Or at least watch over him and shit. Or maybe even keep killing him just as he hits puberty in every subsequent lifetime so he can never ever remember the crucial info that could destroy the world. Or better yet, even just imprison him in their own digital chip and then chuck it into the ocean, so that Evan can never then reincarnate and Bathurst will never be able to enact his deadly plan. Ah, oh, I don't know. It's a Mark Wahlberg movie, so screw thinking and shit. Anyway, consider ringing that bell thing so you don't miss any future recaps. Tell me if you like this flick in the comments if you have time, and I'll see you in the next one.